Well, are you guys expecting to hear the word tonight? Okay, cool. Because we've been talking about trapdoors, eh? Do you guys still remember what we've spoken about? Okay, a couple of people have. The rest of you have forgotten already. But that's fun. Um, tonight, I'm going to be speaking about something that you might not think is really a trapdoor. And when I get into the word and, and we start discussing it, you're going to think, well, that's not really a trapdoor and a whole lot of reasons are going to come into your mind. But I want to tell you right now that it is a trapdoor. And not only is it a trapdoor, it's something that's going to create more trapdoors in your life. And it's going to work in the reverse too because it's just going to get you out of trapdoors. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't because you don't understand. <laughs> okay, but I need you to listen carefully because I need to set this word up um, very carefully because if you, if you don't understand me, then you need to say something because we need to get understanding because... I love one scripture, and it's Proverbs 4 verse 7, and it says, all, in all you're getting, get understanding. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, you must say so, so that we can work through it. Is that right? I see some hands waving and some... <laughs> um, okay, cool. Okay. Is this thing on the screens yet? No. Okay, cool. So here's my scripture for tonight. Proverbs 18, verse 21. It says, the, to the tongue has the power of life and death. And I put life and death in bold letters and underlined. Because I want you, if you've got a pen, if you write in your Bible, and if you don't, you should start, to underline it, highlight it, Put a circle around it, color it, put a star on the side, make notes, whatever you can, because it's quite important, the scripture. The tongue has the power of life and death. And, you, and I bet you're thinking they're going, this is not really a trapdoor, is it? <laughs> Who's thinking that? Yeah, at least Mark's being honest. Because <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, yeah, it's just not really a trapdoor, eh? But as we get in, we'll keep looking in that. Okay, next scripture that I've got is Matthew 15, 7 to 8, not 18. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? That's kind of weird, eh? I always think of that and go, why did you say that, Jesus? <laughs> um, but the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and these defile you. Okay, one or two X got it. <laughs> what comes out of the mouth is what defiles you. Okay, do you get that? So we've spoken about life and death is in the tongue, okay? And what comes out of the mouth is what defiles you. You getting this? Okay, you're with me. Okay, so in trapdoors, what did Tom speak about? Music, okay, what you listen to, so that's what you hear, am I right? Okay, what did Colin speak, speak about? What you see, and what am I speaking about? So can anyone think of a phrase that kind of goes along those lines? Okay, cool, you guys are with me. So I entitled my sermon, Speak No Evil. But then I thought about it long and hard today, because if, if power and, the power of life and death is in the tongue, then I can't entitle my sermon, Speak No Evil, because then I'm kind of looking at it negatively, am I right? It should have been only speak good. Okay, cool. I just thought to throw in there. Okay, so what we've got, if we look at this, we've got a divine connection that happens between your eyes, your ears, and your mouth. And I wrote it down like this. I got it from someone else. Copyrights on it. Um, so I'm going to use it. But it's, it says, what goes through your eyes, what goes through your ears, and what comes out of your mouth is established in your heart. Okay. And you look at this scripture, and you think, but it says here, the things that come out of the mouth are come from the heart, and that's what defiles you. And I read the scripture, and I was like, that's kind of weird, because um, what's coming out of my mouth is what defiles me, not what's going in, because he's just contradicted himself. Am I right? You hear, you're, hearing, you're seeing that. There's a contradiction here. He's saying only what comes out of your mouth, and I'm saying what goes into you as well. Do you see that? Okay. But, but... Let me show you something else. If I said to you the word, if I said bondage to you, you guys got that? Bondage? Did you hear it? 
Okay, now in your mind, you formed a little picture, didn't you? Am I right? Okay, no matter what it be, I'll tell you what my picture is. It's like this funny, funky font that says bondage and with two chains like going through it. That's my little picture that I get. Okay, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but it's my, my picture. Yours might be a prison cell or something else. But when I said the word, yes, I heard it. So three things happened. It went through your eyes, it went through your ears, and it came out of my mouth. Okay, but two, two things happened to you guys. It came into your eyes and it went into your ears. And that became established in your heart. Now, obviously, it's not going to get established the first time you do it, but the more you do it, it's going to become established. The more and more you do it, it will be more and more established in your heart. That's why when, when, when Tom and Colin were talking about music and movies, the more you listen to ungodly music, the more it becomes established in you and it becomes a way of life. And it's harder to get out of. You see, you can look at something on the internet once. It will be a lot easier to get out of it once than if you've done it for 14 years. Okay, Colin's with me. Okay, so we go back to this, that the tongue has the power of life and death in it. Okay. And when I read the scripture, I was like, wow, that's really amazing that the tongue's got life and death in it. Um, and I was speaking to Tom, he was telling me the other day, he was like, you know, someone just, I'll tell you the, basically what I say is, our words nowadays don't have any power in our mind. That's what we think. We think words are cool, we can just say whatever we want. And Tom gave a brilliant example. He said, you meet someone in the shop and you're in a rush. you got somewhere to go. You quickly run into the shop and you meet someone there and they're like, how's it? And you go, oh, how's it, man? So good to see you. And you're like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. And then they start talking and then you're like, oh, maybe we should go for coffee sometime to get away and to stop the conversation. But you actually didn't mean any of it. It wasn't good to see them, and you don't want to go for coffee. So you're lying. Are you with me? Okay. And that's, that's how we live. And I'm sure all of you guys are saying, yes, I've done that, and I do it all the time. And we all do it, but it's something that we need to change. Because the Bible doesn't operate like that when it comes to the tongue and what we say. Okay, are you with me? And let me say this as well while we're here, is clothing and the stuff that you put up around your house. I don't know if you've ever seen on the back of cars, bad boys in transit or bad boy, bad girl in transit. Have you seen that? Okay. Now that to me is just absolute rubbish. That's just setting up your kids for disaster. And probably setting up your life for disaster too. So look, go home and look at all the clothing you've got and read everything on it. Because I can tell you, I bought a pair of baggies one day and I was like, yes, these are really nice baggies. And I got home, I wore them once, and the next time I went to wear them, I pulled them out of my cupboard, and I looked closely at them, and they had like skulls and crossbones and all this stuff in fine print, like underneath all the pictures that it had on them. And I was like, whoa, throw those pants away straight away. You know, some of the stuff that you're wearing, you haven't looked at very carefully, and you need to look at it carefully because it might be speaking something into your life, and it might be hindering what God wants to do. Just a little sidetrack. And on that note, Jesus said, what did he say? He said, let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Okay, so why didn't Jesus say, make a promise if you want to make a promise? Are you there? When someone says to you, if someone says to you, I'm going to be there at half past two, you be there at half past two. Don't arrive late. That's nonsense. <laughs> and if church starts at half past eight, you arrive at quarter past eight. Not at half past eight. I can see the oaks at the back standing up. They're loving this. <laughs> hey, Judy. <laughs> um, I was, I was, while I was thinking about this today, I was laughing because I remember going to, going to meet someone the one, one time. I was so nervous to meet them. Um, and I didn't really know where I was going. So I made sure I was about half an hour early. Um, I was meeting them at their house. And I found their house. And, and I hung around like outside their house for about half an hour. I just drove up and down the road and <laughs> moved around because I didn't want to be late. So Jesus said, let your yes be your yes. And I, I thought about this one as well. You know, imagine, imagine Jesus says to Peter, he says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter's like, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Say you oath. <laughs> hey, Jesus wasn't like that. He said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus was like, okay, cool. 
but you're not loving me in the right way, but that's another sermon. Okay, you got it. So let your yes be yes and your no be no. And don't do the whole time thing. I'm not going to go on to it again because I get irritated. Okay, so that's my intro done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so just, I just want to quickly want to just um, show you where I'm going with this because I think if, you, if I don't show you where I'm going, you, you might get a little bit lost. Okay, um, what I'm going to explain to you now is, is kind of a little bit more about why we need to know why the tongue, the tongue has the power of life and death. Um, I have shared a little bit on it, but I'll go more into detail and show you more scripture and stuff like that. And then I'm going to give you um, a little something to do because if the word's going out and you're not doing anything, it's pointless. Am I right? James said, be doers of the word, not only hearers. Is that right? You guys cool with that? Okay, well, the youth are cool because they already know what they're going to have to do. Well, they don't, but they already do it, so it's fine. Um, so cool, so let's go. You ready? Okay, so what does Proverbs 18, 21 say? It's a little bit of shaky start there. <laughs> Should we all read it together? One, two, three. The tongue has the power of life and death. Okay, cool. You're going to keep saying that all night long until you get it. Okay. Just, just before I start like, showing you more what the Bible talks about in Scripture, I want you to know that the tongue... And what you say actually has the power to create things and to change the situation. And you might not think so, but I'm going to show you from the scripture that the creative power is in the mouth. You get that? Okay. So my question to you at the beginning is, are you creating life or death? Sounds like a lot of death in this room. <laughs> okay. I'm going to show you quickly. We're going to go through the Bible very quickly. I'm going to try to do it as quickly as I can. Okay, let's start right at the beginning. Genesis 1. What does it say? Anyone know? Okay, I'm sure you all know. It says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then it says in verse 2, it says, and God said, and then a little bit later it said, and then a little bit later it said, and a little bit later it said. Okay, now if we go in between all the little bit laters, it said, and it was so. God said, let there be light, and there was light. He didn't say, oh, do this funny thing and make light, and there was light. It was light, and there was light. Is that cool? Okay. So that's how God created everything. God just said it. Okay. Then you go to Jesus in, in uh, Matthew 4. Jesus is temptation, and the devil comes to him, and he tempts him and stuff. Jesus quotes the word, doesn't he? He says, it is written. It is written. It is written. He didn't, like, I know when I was at Bible college, they used to say, if the devil comes and tempts you with something, run. I was like, yes, <laughs> run, you know? But when, when the devil came to tempt Jesus, Jesus didn't run. He just stood up in front of him and said, no, it's written. The word says. Okay. Matthew 8. Verse 26. I hope I've got it here. And he replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Do I need to explain that scripture? <laughs> the disciples are going frantically mad. They're trying to do everything they can. And they're like, Jesus, wake up. Don't you care about us? And Jesus stands up and he goes, be calm, and it's calm. Did you see the authority that comes out of his mouth when he speaks? Are you seeing that? Are you with me? Okay. I've got a lot of scriptures from Matthew. Matthew 17, verse 28. It says, he replied, because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say, if you're making notes, write, underline, highlight, colors, anything, say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. Okay, obviously there's a connection here with faith, which we're not going to go into, but, but Jesus says, if you have faith, okay, faith is a different story, you can say to this mountain, be moved, and it will be moved. And I, 
I think a lot of people look at the scripture and they're like, yeah, but Jesus was talking about spiritual mountains and stuff. Yeah, that's all cool. He might be. I'm not denying that. But I also think he was saying, you know what? The power is in your mouth. If you just say it, it will be done. Obviously, you have to believe in your heart as well, but we're not on that. Okay, you with me? Okay, another one, Matthew 21, verse 19. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up and found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, may you never be bear fruit again. Immediately, the tree withered. Amazing, isn't it? He walks up to a tree. I mean, the tree's done nothing wrong. It's just there. It just doesn't have any fruit on it. And he says, you'll never bear fruit again. And the tree just withers up and dies. I'm like, cool. <laughs> hey? And while I was thinking about all these things, I thought, you know what we do? We get there and there's a situation and we go, oh, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's lay hands. You know? Are you with me? Okay. The next one is, have you ever looked at Jesus' miracles? I think most of his miracles, he just spoke. You know, when we see someone that's sick, we're like, we like, come, let's pray hands and let's have faith and all this stuff. Pray and <laughs> lay hands. Um, but Jesus doesn't do that. He sees someone that's sick and he's like, get up, pick up your mat, walk, go home. He's not, oh, I pray that the word of God would just come in and all this weird stuff. Eh? Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. That's cool. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus said, get up and walk. And he says, when he, when he, sees, when he spoke about the guy with the crippled hand the other day, what did he say to him? He said, just stretch out your hand. Just stretch out your hand and it will be healed. And the servant comes to him. And he says, my, my, the, the person comes to him and says, my servant's sick at home. Will you come and pray for them? And then uh, what is the guy says? The guy says, you don't even need to come. Just say the word. And Jesus said, okay, go. Your servant will be well. It's like amazing, isn't it? He just speaks and, it, and it's done. You still with me? Okay, this, this has got to be my best one. I love this one. X. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. <laughs> Seems like you guys all got that. I love it. I, we, we like, I always think, Whenever we do an offering, it's like, hey, raise your hands. Say, okay, I can see you. Okay, cool. Give your life to the Lord. I'll pray for you. I'm like, Acts says, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believing in your heart, what we're talking about, faith. But I love verse 10 where it says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. You with me? Okay, so I looked at that verse and I was like, so in order to be saved, we have to confess with our mouth. Not X. Romans, yeah, sorry, sorry, my bad. My notes, it says Romans as well. Yeah. <laughs> Roger, I knew Roger wanted to look at that scripture. <laughs> um. James, this one's quite a long, long scripture. Let's go through it. It says, when we put bits, uh, bits in miles of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take a ship as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great posts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the, body, among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is its, itself set on fire by hell. That's pretty scary, isn't it? Very scary. When I read that, I was like, whoa. You know? I mean, we talk about the power, the tongue has the power of life and death and this scripture kind of like just says well pretty much your tongue is just death 
You with me? So I was pretty scared about the scripture, but I want you to not look at about getting worried about what it says because he was obviously talking to a certain group of people that were going through a certain cert circumstances. But at the beginning when he talks about a ship being moved by a small little bit of it, bit of it that's the rudder, and the whole course of that ship can change just by a little small thing. And that's what your tongue's like. Your tongue can change your whole life if you can get it right. Well, it probably will change your life as well if you get it wrong, but it's just not going to change it the right way. You still with me? Okay. Check this. 412, guys. <laughs> Revelation 1.16. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. Out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. And then it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. <laughs> um, but that's kind of kind of cool if you look at those two scriptures together because then it's kind of like well the, the word of God actually has to come out of my mouth that's what it's saying really do you see the connection good I'm glad Scott's with me <laughs> thanks thanks guys okay so let me hear you say it again one two three What are you creating? Life or death? Okay, I want to look at two things because the scripture says we can create life and death and I've shown you a bit of what the Bible says about the tongue um, and I want to show you the life side of it and the tongue, the death side of it. Um, okay, so uh, just, just quickly while, while we're here about the two, there's a life and death. Um, when you've spoken a death, word over your life, a negative word, you can change that confession to a positive one. Do you understand? Okay, and I'll show you the example is when uh, Peter, Peter denies Jesus how many times? And how many times did Jesus ask him if he loved him? Three times. So basically what Jesus was saying, okay, Peter, you've made a negative confession about me. Now I need to change that negative confession around to become a positive confession. Are you with me? Okay. And along negative confessions, there's a lot that the Bible says about negative words. But I want to challenge you tonight because I think we've gone enough, enough about what, what the word says about the tongue and how powerful it is. But I want to ask you tonight is what are your confessions? Are you creating life or death? Because I think for a lot of us, we're creating death. And I had to check my heart a lot of times in the last three days because I said things and I was like, whoa, Mark, you shouldn't have said that. That was a death statement. And, and it, this way it comes. The biggest ones that I think that we've got them is when it comes to politics. So you're all shaking your head because you're too scared to say amen. Because yeah. we speak so negatively about the government, don't we? Eh? And Zimbabwe, we speak negative. We speak negative the whole time. Oh, you know what's happening in Zimbabwe now? They're doing this, 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 this. You know, it might be truth. That's what's happening. But it doesn't mean you have to say it. You can speak positive confessions and change the state of Zimbabwe by your words. And you can change this country with your words. And you know what? On that note, you can change your marriage with your words. Okay. Chris, do you want to just change that thing back again? And I want to show you something, because I've got two adverts I want to play for you. Um, and um, I want you to look at them in the light of we've got a no negative confession and we've got a positive confession. Okay? And I want you to watch them closely. Okay, play that first one. It's called Amy. Hello. My name is Thomas. In 12 years' time, you will meet at the stop street. I will walk up to your car and put a gun to your head. 
If you don't get out of the car, I will shoot you. My name is Peter. In seven years' time, I'll be meeting a parking lot. I'll be asking for money. I'll just keep on walking. But it won't get very far. Because I'll stay with three times and I'll take a bag. My name is Tebuchel. In 10 years' time, I'll be serving a life sentence in prison. I'll be eating three meals a day and have a roof over my head. And you will be paying for it. My name is David. In 10 years' time, I'm going to give your daughter AIDS. Scary, isn't it? Now you probably all sat there and go, wow, that's an, a really good advert because it grips your heart, doesn't it? Because when I went and watched it, I was like, wow, that's such a brilliant advert. Because it got my attention and it got me thinking and I was like, I, I even remember who the people were that were advertising. So as an advertiser, I'm like, that is a brilliant advert. But as a Christian, I'm like, no way, that's not right. That is speaking negative words over my country and I'm not going to accept that. By the way, the advert was banned after like two days or something, so it didn't really get on. Um, and I'm, I've watched the advert many times. I've been like, yes, such a brilliant advert. But today I watched it and I was like, no way am I going to live with this in my country. People, I mean, I feel sorry for the kids that had to do that advert and that to speak that over their lives. Okay, now I want you to show you another South African advert that to me I'm so excited about because... It is so positive about South Africa, and I'm 100% I'm positive about South Africa. I'm never, ever, ever going to leave South Africa. I'll tell you that straight up. I think it's the best country in the world, and let's watch that advert. Today, I walk up in a place outside to me, a friend. I woke up in a place that said, be what you want to be. I woke up to a dream. And I realize that I'm stronger than I was yesterday. I woke up in a place where it's the size of your heart that counts, not your fists. Because yesterday, I was digging for gold. And today, I'm wearing it. Yesterday, I was burning with frustration. Today, I'm growing a big business. I woke up and realized that I don't need a gun to make you listen. And even if I have nothing, this place can give me everything. All I need to do is believe. Today, I woke up in a place whose cheering can be heard on the other side of the world. A place where my brother is my brother, no matter what. Today I woke up in a place that flows with courage. That laughs. That's cried. That says, it's okay. Today I woke up in a place that sings with hope to the rest of the world and I smiled because South Africans are creating a new dawn every day the day I woke up in South Africa awesome isn't it can you can you tell the difference between the two adverts the first one you stopped listening the advert stopped and it was very quiet and everyone was like now after this one, everyone's like a little bit more excited, a little bit more joy in the room. Hey? Doesn't it make you want to stay in South Africa? Most of you want to stay in anyway. Okay. Quickly looking at the positive side of what the tongue can do for you. At three scriptures, quickly I'll read them just from my notes. Um, Proverbs 16:24. It says, Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Do you get that? Okay, Proverbs 12, verse 25. 
It says, an anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. Proverbs 15, 23. A man finds joy in giving an apt reply, and how good is a timely word. Beautiful, isn't it? And speaking on positive things, because we need to start speaking positively over our lives, our country, our government, all those kind of things we need to start speaking positively about. And I want to say this quickly, that you can say positive things and they'll work. Just being positive is a good start to what your tongue does. But a better way to do it is to speak the word of God over it. Okay. And when it comes to something like this, like if you want to speak something over the nations, you go find some scripture that speaks about the nations and the governments and stuff, and you start speaking that scripture. Because what did we say earlier? When you speak something, it goes through your ears, and it goes through your eyes, and it becomes established in your heart. Am I right? Okay, and you need to start doing that, and we need to start speaking the word of God over situations. Okay, but this also leads me to my next point. Is you can't speak the word of God unless you don't know it. Simple. You can speak positively as much as you want. And that's going to help. That's a good start. But when the word of God gets spoken, there's something different that happens. Okay. So, this is what I want you to do. For however long it takes you to do it. Because we need to get this right. Is 412 guys... You don't have to cut down on your Bible reading. The rest of you, I challenge you, and the 412 guys, you've got to do this as well. I challenge you to find one scripture every day, read it. A, a chapter, a verse, whatever it is, read it, think about it, and speak it audibly out of your mouth over this, whatever that w scripture pertains to. Is that all right? Is that a challenge? Because then we've got to find scripture and we've got to start speaking that scripture into our lives and whatever the situation that's going on. Am I right? You with me? Is that cool? Huh? However long it takes you to get it. Okay, and I did make little cards, but they're upstairs in my office. And they've got Proverbs 18 verse 21 on them. And it's got there, hear no evil, speak no evil. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. And I want you to take them. I'm going to put them down on the table afterwards. I want you to take one, and I want you to carry it around with you for the next week. And every time something situation comes up, you can pull it out of your pocket and go, ah, my tongue has the power to change the situation. You with me? Okay. What, and we, there's been a lot said about Bill Winston and what happened there. And I just want to say this, that Bill Winston stood up the one day, after he had done a whole lot of teaching about that it's fine to have money, there's not a problem, and then he stood up and he spoke it, he confessed it, and he said, money cometh to me now. You know, he had shown you that the word was saying, it's fine to be rich. Now he started confessing it. That's when everyone had a problem, because in South Africa, we've got a problem with our words. We're very negative people, and that's got to change. Okay. And I want you to keep speaking that scripture. I want, actually, I think, I think I'm going to challenge you to do it for a month. Read a chapter every day, a verse for a month, and just speak that scripture out of your mouth audibly. Because then it will go through your eyes, go through your ears, come out of your mouth, and it will be established in your heart. And I want to show you something else quickly before you go. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Okay. You'll get that. Okay, so I read the scripture and I was like, okay, what does hidden mean? Anyone want to have a shoot? Okay, no one. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I thought about hidden. I was like, when I hide something, I want to hide it away so that one day when I need it, I can go get it. I know where it is. And because uh, I don't want anyone else to, to steal it from me. Like I've got minstrels in my room and I've hidden them because Dave comes in every day and he just takes some. And I need to hide those away. Otherwise, Dave's going to finish them and I'm not going to have any for myself. And they're mine. Shh. No, you're not. Okay. So we need to hide 
that's what hidden is, okay? And then, and then if you look at it, we need to hide his word in our hearts. So how did we say something got into your heart again? It went through your, went through your ears, went through your eyes, and it came out of your mouth. Okay, so when you get the scripture and you start reading it, you're going to speak it, you're going to hear it, and you're going to see it, and it's going to become established in your heart. And then one day you're going to get into a situation where you can pull that word out and go, huh, I've spoken the scripture over my life. You know, one day when you get into debt, you can, be, you can bring out a scripture and be like, well, uh-uh, the word says differently, and I'm going to make that confession because I've hidden that word in my heart, and it's become established in my life. Are you with me? And I want to tell you something, and just a little testimony, because um, the reason I can speak so much about this, um, and as soon as when we were speaking about what they should do, they said, they were like, we should do the tongue. And they were but, like, Tom and Cole just looked at me, and they were like, Mark, that's yours thing. Um, and the reason I do that, they look at me as that, because I've walked through this so many times, and I've done it so many times. Um, I, was, I went through a bit of time in my life where I was in a bit of depression. Um, not very serious. It was quite mild. Um, but I was still there. And I remember getting up every single day. And I, even to this day, I've got on my cupboard in my room, it says, um, I read the scripture because I knew I'd forget it. Um, Psalm 118 verse 24. And it says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I used to get up every single day and I used to put clothes out of my cupboard and I'd be like, this is the day that God has made. I'm going to re- rejoice. I'm not going to sit here and be all depressed about my life. I'm going to make a change and I'm going to start speaking the word of God over it. You with me? And I had to, you know, something else that you've got to start confessing over your life is that you are the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God and you need to speak it because if you don't speak it, it's not going to get established in your heart. And when you can start speaking and you can start walking in the righteousness of God, when someone comes in here and they wheel a coffin in like we did in emergency 911, you're not going to stand here and say, okay, let's lay hands and pray. You're going to be like, get up. And that person's going to get up because they're supposed to because you're speaking the word of God with all God's righteousness in you. You with me? Okay. And you need to find a scripture that's in your life for something that you're struggling with and you need to start speaking it to change that situation. Because I've done this so many, so many times. I had to do it the other day, a couple months ago. I, I was getting a little bit tired of coming to church on Sunday mornings. I'm being honest, okay? Is that cool? Okay. I was getting a little bit tired, and I used to say, they go, yes, I hate getting up on Sunday mornings. I got up so early, and I drive all the way from Belita, and I got to, go to, I got to sleep so late because Trevor just wants to play ping pong the whole night. And I get really, really, like, upset. And I get to church, and then I'm tired, and I'm irritated because I don't want to be here. And then someone says something, I get even more irritated, and then worship comes, and I'm just like, oh, stuff it, I want to go home. Yeah, Hilton's never off the stage in time. <laughs> um, so I get really irritated. And then God said to me the one day, it's like, no, Mark, you know what? You've actually got to change it because you're coming to church with the wrong attitude. And I was like, yo, okay. So what I do? I step back and I wake up every Sunday morning now. And I say, you know what? It's a joy to serve in the house. It's a joy to come to church on a Sunday. And I come now and Hilton doesn't get off the stage. And I'm like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. I'll just make the service late. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we need to start speaking those things over our lives. You, uh, youth guys, you need to start speaking over your exams when it comes to exam times. Because most of you probably get so stressed, you don't even know what you're doing. But you need to start speaking God's word and saying, no, you know what? I'm, I'm not stressed. And that when I sit down to learn, I don't have to learn for 40 hours because I can't remember half of it. I have the mind of Christ. And then when I learn, I remember it. I learn it once and I remember it. <laughs> okay. I've got nothing less to preach on. <laughs> but you guys get it. Are you guys going to start making confessions of your life? Okay. Can I ask, can I ask one more thing? Can, can we do one more song? Please? Okay. Because I was sitting in worship and we we're doing this song, Great King. And I love, I love it when people just sit in worship. Because then it, like, I'm like, cool, I can challenge you now. Because... Um, I sat I went when we were doing worship and song, Tom singing Great King and, and our victory song. And I see people standing there. Our victory song. And I'm like, I didn't see one Springbok when we won the World Cup standing and go like this. 
I saw all of them like fists in the air and I played touch today and we scored a try in a very close game and I remember jumping about this high and my hands were up and I was running around, I was going mad. That is what a victory song is. Not this. This is not a victory song. That's a depressed, sad song and that's, that's something you're speaking over your life and it's not right. So we're going to change that tonight, okay? So when we sing victory song, there's going to be victory. You with me? Okay, Ben, do you want to come up? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to see me dance. Because then I have to get my white pants out. You missed the try. Okay. Okay, let's just pray quickly. Father, we just thank you for your word tonight. Do you want to, everyone just stand up and raise your hands? Father, I just thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. Father, we just thank you for this word. And we just ask that you'd continually speak to us during this week father as we start to make confessions over our lives and we start to change the situation father we lift up the government to you father we just thank you that that your anointing you have anointed them to be in that position father that you will lead them and you'll guide them in all righteousness father we lift up zimbabwe to you father we just speak life over zimbabwe today and we speak life in every christian in that place and we say that that nation is god's nation and that is a treasured possession and we thank you tonight that we can celebrate victory in these areas of our lives. In Jesus' name.